Hey guys, what is up? It's me, Mark Elvin. So, you want to vote for your school student council's elections, whether it's president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, etc, etc. But, you don't know where to start, or you're simply just scared of trying and failing. Well, stay tuned as I share with you guys my tips and tricks of increasing your chances of winning your student council's elections. Hey guys! Okay, so just a little 411. I too have ran for my student council's elections back during like my high school days. God, I sound so old. Well, anyway, so I ran and I won. And mind you, this was when I was just beginning like at a new school. Like I didn't know anybody, I didn't have any friends, I didn't I wasn't popular or anything. Like nobody even knew me. Everybody was kind of already in their own cliques, and I was kind of like the loner that like hanged out in the library and stuff. So this was a very difficult task for me because like, I didn't know if I'm even gonna get votes or if people were gonna even like me and like my campaigns and like my speech. But nevertheless, I was determined. Like I've always wanted to be like an ASB or like student council or whatever you guys call it. And I was just determined to get in it for my senior year. Yeah, like I was aiming high, like I was aiming for an elected position. We have elected positions and we have appointed. I was aiming for like the top dog. So I just went for it and I won. But anyways, point of the story is if I can do it, you can too. Also, by the way, this video is going to be quite very long. So I'm going to put the times of each of the sections down below in the description box. So you can just pick which section you want to focus on, whether it's like the speech or campaign. Etc. Et okay, so let's get started. Okay, so first things first is signing up or the application process. So I don't know if how your school does it, but my school we needed three letters of recommendation and uh, just a bunch of signatures, right? So easy. You also needed like I believe a 3.0 GPA, but I'm not too sure. But check with your school first to see what are the requirements for even running. So number two. Get rid of all negative excuses. So now that you've signed up, you start getting like all these regrets like, oh my gosh, was that the right thing to do? Or what, oh my God, should I even run? So if you're dropping out for all the right reasons, like you're lazy or you just can't handle it or you already have too much on your plate or you're just doing it for popularity, then good, drop out. But if you're dropping out simply just because you think your opponent's more popular or you think he's gonna already win, then stop right there, chill, relax, take a step back. Now you may be nervous because they're popular, but just because they're popular doesn't mean that they're gonna get all the votes. So let's analyze why you're scared of your opponents. Maybe because they're too popular. But mind you, just because they're popular and everybody knows of them, it doesn't mean they're friends with them, if that makes any sense. So let me clarify. So I've been to three different high schools and all the popular people were all the same. They're pretty, they're athletic, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they also have cliques, just like everybody else. And like, there's just a number amount of people in a clique. Like, usually I've seen somewhere from a range of like three people to like 25 people in a clique. So for starters, that's gonna get you nowhere if you just settle down with your clique. So what you have to do is just reach out and branch out to other cliques, make friends, make one friend of that clique, and then they'll start telling their friends and their friends are gonna start telling their friends. So it's just like this whole chain effect. So yeah, don't be intimidated by how popular someone is. A lot of people may know them, but not everybody's friends with them. Someone's gonna vote for you if they have a pure connection with you. Popular people are just known for their reputation. Okay, so number three, campaigning. So campaigning is so important. You have to be unique, you have to get to the point, but you also have to be funny and humorous. Let me tell you guys right now, nobody wants to vote for somebody that's just so serious and has to stick up their ass. Like you gotta have, you gotta have fun with it. So personally, a great campaign idea is memes. Also just a little fun fact, I've been calling memes memes for like the longest time ever and nobody stopped and corrected me until like three weeks ago. Anyways, back to the point. If you're not good with posters, if you're not good with drawing, then you could totally just go on the internet, type up like Mimi templates, and then I oh, called it Mimi again. Type in meme templates and like it'll give you like pictures and then you just like basically just type in what you wanted to say. Also make multiple ones so it's not just the same one over and over and over again all over the school. Make a good amount. Something I also did for my campaigning since like I was new and nobody really knew me. Okay, so 
let's just start with day one of camp painting, right? So for day one, like I spray painted a bunch of like construction paper with my name on it. Just like literally just mark, not even my last name, not even for the position that I was running for, just mark. And I placed it all over school. Like the brick walls had marked, the doors had marked. Like people were wondering like, who is Mark? Like. What is he running for? Like, what is he even doing? Like, make them talk and make them wonder, who is this Mark? And then, like, on the third day or second day, you start putting up flyers of, like, your actual full name and the position you're running for. And then they're like, oh, that's Mark. And that's the position he's running for. So then they start getting to, like, know your name and you're kind of like the talk of the school. And then towards the end of the campaign, you have to bring out all your best campaign ideas like for me personally i use and utilize videos on instagram and like snapchat to just get my campaign across i did something different and something that nobody else did so you really have to be unique because campaigns happen every year and people are so tired of the same old same old vote for or vote for or a change for the school is a change for delivered i don't know but it's boring, like I see the same thing over and over and over again. Be different, be unique, and just have fun with it. Trust me guys, these techniques that I use, like, and the order of it too, it's all about timing. They really help me so much in winning my election. So your main goal at this stage is to have your name on the back of everyone's head. So when it's time to deliver your speech, people are like, oh, that's Mark. Okay, so the fourth thing is speech. Let me just emphasize to you guys right now, your speech is probably the most important thing ever. It determines if you win the elections or not. Like campaigns are great first impressions and everything, but your speech is the last thing people are gonna hear right before they vote. So make it count and make it worth it. You have like five to 10 minutes. I don't really know the rules of your school's elections, but mine, I think, it had to be like under like six minutes or so. So you have six minutes to deliver yourself and to sell yourself to the audience to why they should vote for you as their best candidate. So now just a couple tips and tricks for speeches. Number one, really sit down and develop your speech. Really work hard and curate it to the best that it could be. And then after you write it, rehearse it. Rehearse it right in front of a mirror. I know this is ridiculous, but trust me guys, it helps so much. Number two, coffee and caffeine and like energy drinks. So this is something you wanna experiment right before like the elections or something, or just anytime before the elections. Like coffee and caffeine have different effects on people. I know coffee and caffeine, it makes me really like, it builds up my energy. It makes me very energetic, but also it gives me so much anxiety. That's what caffeine does to your body. It gives you so much anxiety than you already have. So really when you think it's helping you, it might actually be holding you back. So yeah, maybe just experiment. Maybe it will help you, but also maybe it will just make it worse. Number three, fake it. So if you're shy or if you're an introvert, but you really, really want this position, then all I have to say is fake it until you make it. Personally, me, I was super shy. Like, I didn't even know 80% of the people that were on the audience. Like, it was that bad, but you just have to fake it because I really wanted the position so bad. So it really depends on how bad do you want it. If you really want it that bad, then you have to just get out of your comfort zone. Number four, have energy and be interesting. You can totally win with a great speech, but you need to have a great energy to deliver that speech to its maximum potential. I mean, you can also have a not so great speech, but if you're energetic and you're interesting and the audience finds you engaging, then you can totally have a chance of winning. In my opinion, the way you talk and how energetic and how interesting you are is a lot more memorable than if you were just saying your speech word for word with no energy, no passion. So yeah, just definitely have energy and definitely have passion in what you're doing. Number five, humor. You guys gotta have humor. Like it's a school student election. It's not the Republican GOP debate. Have humor, be funny chill like relax please don't be serious like it's just gonna make your audience very very bored and they might not even consider you as a possible candidate so definitely definitely be funny be humorous and be entertaining so this also goes for body movement like move around make hand gestures 
don't just be a sitting log. Don't just stand there and just like look at the audience or look at your speech and just yeah, don't do that, please. And finally, just smile, okay? Just see, it's, it's not that hard. Just smile. I think a great smile really sells. But make sure your teeth aren't yellow or you have leftovers stuck in your teeth. No, 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 that's not pretty at all. Okay, so number five, I believe, dealing with nerves. Okay, so there's many different ways of dealing with nerves. For me personally, I just tell myself that this is normal. Like, I'm acknowledging that I'm nervous. This helps you just minimize how nervous you will be and like it just helps minimize you to not overthink. So something I also like to do is repetitions. I like to repeat short, inspiring quotes. So like for example, whenever I'm about to deliver a speech or whenever I'm about to be in front of a big audience, something I always tell myself is, your fear of looking stupid is what's holding you back. And I just keep saying that over and over again. Your fear of looking stupid is what's holding you back. Your fear of looking stupid is what's holding you back. So that really helps me too. So going back to the speech part about humor and jokes, be funny up there because when you're funny, because then your audience starts getting more used to you and when you feel that energy, when you feel that the audience is getting more used to, it makes it less nerve-wracking to be up there on stage. Okay, so number six is dress to remember. So dress code from what I noticed from student elections is formal or semi-formal. People wear a lot of neutrals, whether it's black, gray, white. Now I'm here to tell you guys to do the exact opposite. Now I'm not telling you guys to like dress all hood rat, ratchet, rage, Coachella type of thing. I'm telling you guys to just be a little bit rebellious. You have to wear something that they'll remember you by. Okay, so for example, I wore this top from Zara and I also wore like some brown khakis. And then I wore my Oxfords, and with my Oxfords, I wore these crazy ass socks. And I'm not even kidding you guys, somebody in the audience told me right after the elections, they told me that they were sitting all the way in the back and they could see my socks all the way in the back. I also managed to overhear someone talking right before they were about to vote. Like, who are you gonna vote for? And then they were like, oh, I'm gonna vote for the guy with the crazy ass socks. What was his name? Mark. Give them something to associate your name with, whether it's a colorful sock or like a very colorful jacket. Have fun with it. So yeah, definitely don't go crazy. Like don't come to school with like a polar bear outfit and like a polar bear Eskimo jacket. Don't do that. No. People are not going to take you seriously. You still have to dress professionally with a little hint of rebelliousness. Okay, so well anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So these are the steps that I took to win my student council's elections and they all worked in my favor. So I really hope you guys got something out of it. Like I said, I was totally new to this school. It was my first year and I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but it turned out amazing. People loved my speech. People loved my campaign posters. Like I just had fun with it, you know? Most people, they think that elections are all about like competition. Really, don't think of it as a competition. Think of it as yourself. Think of it as something that's benefiting you. So if you keep focusing on what other people is doing, then you're never gonna have the chance to really work on yourself. And so yeah, I really just focus on yourself. Don't think of it as a competition. Like, have fun with it. Be funny. Be energetic. My number one tip right now is for you to have fun. Be yourself. And just go along with it. Also, please, please never give up. Don't give up, please. I don't know about you, but I'd rather fail than have that doubt in my stomach that like, what if? Like, what if I could have won? So, okay, so just a little FYI, two or three days within the campaign, like, I wanted to drop out. And if I dropped out, I wouldn't have gotten that position. So really, please don't give up. I know it's hard. Like, I know, like, during campaigns, it might not look like people are in your favors, but you really have to work hard on it. And like, you really have to tell yourself, like, how bad do you want this? But anyway, so if you guys like this video, make sure you guys give it a big thumbs up. Also, make sure you guys subscribe for more videos. I post every single week. 
I don't really have a day where I post. I just post every single week and when I feel like it. So, so being a fellow subscriber really helps you get notified of my new and latest videos. Also, make sure you guys follow my social media tabs down below. They're all in the description box, so just go check those out. Also, if you guys have any other questions you want me to answer, then feel free to like leave them down there in the comment section, and I'll try my best to answer them. But anyways, I'll see you guys next week. Bye!